Hello, uh, I can't believe we're starting in a week. So this is just a short video uh, to help those who have never used masking fluid and are worried about uh, what to do and uh, have questions of how, how to apply it. So just, uh, I've got, we're gonna do a quick demo, but before we do the quick demo, I just wanna go through a few points with you. All right. So there's lots more about masking fluid. We can have lots of conversations, but this will be just uh, sufficient to get you ready uh, to start uh, your class or workshop. All right, so first thing you wanna do uh, is apply masking fluid in areas where we're gonna protect the white or we're gonna put another color later, but we just wanna protect our, a lighter area. Okay. And I'm gonna show you exactly where we're gonna be putting in, why we're gonna put it there, okay? Now there are different kinds of masking fluid and uh, there is one kind, if you look at the bottle carefully, it's called permanent masking fluid. Now you don't wanna use that because that will never come off your paper. So make sure it is not permanent, okay? Now you've got your masking fluid, you might have had it uh, on your shelf or cupboard for a while. What you don't wanna do is shake it. Uh, what happens when you shake it is you introduce all these little bubbles and then when you apply it and it dries, it creates these little holes for the paint to penetrate. So you don't want to do that. So if you find it might be clumpy, you could rotate your bottle, you could stir it with the end of a, a brush or anything you'd like, okay? But never shake. Or if you are going to shake it, let it sit for uh, half a day for all the bubbles to kind of go away. Okay. And we're going to be applying using a brush to apply the masking fluid. There are other instruments, but we can talk about those later. But for now, I think the brush is probably the most accessible. And uh, I'm going to show you how to protect your brush. Because once you apply masking fluid to a brush, and if you don't do anything to it, that is it. That becomes a single-use brush. Now, today I'm going to be using mass, uh, dishwasher soap to protect uh, the hairs of the brush. Uh, but you can also use hand soap, and I'll, I'll explain to you both as we're going along, okay? Now, I tend to apply my masking fluid quite thickly. Why? Because it, when it uh, dries, it does shrink. And if it's applied too thinly, as it shrinks, it creates air bubbles, and the paint will get through in areas you don't want it to. And secondly, it makes it so much easier to remove the masking fluid once you're done with it, okay? Now, this cute... Next point is absolutely key. You want to apply your masking fluid on a dry paper. If for any reason your paper is damp, even if you feel to the hand, you know, touch to the hand, it feels dry, uh, but the paper is slightly damp, you will never remove that masking fluid off your paper without ripping it. So you don't want that to happen. And trust me, that happens oftentimes when I teach people think, uh, the paper slightly damp, they've stretched their paper, and then they go, oh, it feels dry after a couple of hours, and then they apply the masking fluid. Well, you don't want that to happen, all right? Uh, and then most importantly, this is where I see a lot of uh, challenges with the masking fluid. When you're applying it uh, on your paper, imagine that you're painting. You wanna create beautiful strokes. You want the nice straight edges. You don't want it too much, too raggedy. It could happen, uh, will likely happen, but you want to minimize those incidents, okay? So just pretend you're painting, and but you're using masking fluid. And lastly, you want to make sure it's 100% dry before you start painting uh, on your painting, all right? So you'll notice the masking fluid will have lost its shine. Uh, so do make sure that you apply it uh, at least a day ahead before you paint. I just say for that way. All right. So let's stop, share this, and uh, let's move on to the camera for the demo. Uh, so hopefully this isn't too overwhelming and this works for everybody. All right. So because masking fluid uh, could be a really good part of your watercolor journey. Okay, so this is the uh, painting where you're painting in one of my classes. Uh, so we're doing this uh, this week. And what we're going to be doing is applying masking fluid in the light areas. And why do I want to apply it in this light areas? Because it's much easier if I protect all these lighter areas, including the yellow water lilies, because then we could use a big brush and apply the background. Now, if you were not going to use masking fluid, 
you would have to paint around all these objects. And inevitably what would happen is that your water, in this case, the water would look all blotchy because to try to get an even wash uh, to, to make this look smooth uh, takes uh, nice big strokes. You can't do this with a little brush. So this is why we're gonna be applying masking fluid. So we're gonna be applying masking fluid almost on everything except the dark water. It's just gonna simplify your life. It's a little bit more work, uh, uh, more work up front, but then it simplifies your life, okay? So I'm gonna set this aside for a second. And I'm not gonna do all the little dots in this demo. So first thing I'm gonna do is I've got a, an old brush. You never ever wanna use your good brush on this because if there's an area that's not covered properly with the soap, it will ruin your brush. So not an expensive brush, go to the dollar store, get a brush, and then you can just use that, all right? Uh, so I've dampened my brush, I've got water over here. I'm gonna take off the excess water. So my, and then here's, uh, here's the weird part. I normally do this over the sink, I don't do this uh, over here. So I'm gonna put a bit of soap on my hand. This is just plain dishwasher soap. And I'm gonna cover my entire brush, okay? I just cover it completely, all right? Then I'm gonna create a point for it because I wanna paint with a nice point, okay? I'm just gonna wipe my hand for a second. Uh, all right, and then I'm gonna use, uh, normally I, I use small containers and apply masking fluid, especially if I've got more than just a couple of dots to play. So today I'm gonna to try to use this older one this is a Piveo brand. Uh, I use it only when I teach because it's blue and you can see what I'm doing. Uh, but this is my favorite brand, Windsor Newton. It's, they call it art masking fluid and uh, make sure it's not, doesn't stay permanent on here at all. And it's got a slightly yellow tinge, but for the purpose of the camera, it doesn't show so well. So I've poured the, well, I'm not too sure what I've done with that bottle. It's way over there. All okay, right, so this is this is Pebeo. It's uh, it's blue and it's it's separating. So I'm a little bit nervous about this, but you know I want to do it for the class. I've had bad incidents with Pebeo actually tinting the paper, so I'm not a huge fan of it. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to dip, and I'm just going to put it in here, and then I'm just going to go through and put it and protect those areas. It's as simple as that. Now you're gonna do a bit of the shapes, a few of the shapes, and I'm gonna apply it thickly, so I don't hesitate to just drop it back in. Right. Um, you're gonna do a few of the shapes, so you know, work for five minutes or so, and then you're gonna rinse your brush with soap over the sink, clean it, and then you're gonna reapply soap, and then you're gonna continue. Because otherwise, this gets this dries up, it's gonna get all, all gunky on you, and you wanna keep Beautiful shape. So you want the outer edges, in this case, to be nice and smooth. All right. Now, uh, one downside to masking fluid, uh, if you're applying, for example, we're gonna do the flower, um, it's gonna remove, it will remove the, um, uh, the lines inside. So um, I should go back and I put, I should put really dark lines. So that's all there is to masking fluid. You're just gonna paint over it like this. So it's, there's nothing complicated to it. You just have to be careful and apply it right. Now, uh, the brush is probably the easiest, probably the most accessible things, but there are other applicators, silicone applicators that you can use uh, for this. I guess I didn't protect just the flower. I need to protect that little, that uh, area in the back. So for example, um, where, am I, where else am I looking at? Let's see, where else can you see? I guess I could have zoomed in for you. All right, I'm just going to do a bit of these yellow lines. Um, before I continue, I do want to darken my line. If it's just a single outline like this, it's no problem. Now you can see I pulled it through and I've applied it. And it's a bit thin. Well, you can't really see, but I'll tell you. It's, it's a bit thin. I can almost see the paper through it. So I'm going to put a bit more masking fluid in there. Once I've applied it, it's similar to paint. And with, sur with surfaces, I can go back and just drop it in. Now, once you're done here, just don't, don't go back. Just leave it as is. And you wanna put this aside. You wanna make sure your cat doesn't get into this. And I should say, you wanna make sure your sleeve doesn't get into this. Uh, it does not come off fabric, okay? 
So you're going to go through all these uh, these little shapes. So you're going to get you're going to have at the end of the day a lot a lot of for this painting because I'm doing everything except the background. Um, there's going to be a lot of masking fluid on here, but it does take longer. It adds to your time, but uh, trust me, uh, when we go to do the background, the background won't take so long, and it'll be nice and smooth. Okay, so that's all there is. Uh, I did mention, what else did I mention? That you could use the bar of soap. So if I was uh, over the sink or something, I could just wet the bar of soap, brush my brush on it, just coat it all the hairs, and then come back and do this. So that's all there is to apply masking fluid. Um, I just want to recover some of the hairs. I wanted to just, for the purposes of this demo, I just wanted to stay in the center to make it clear. But I would have started uh, similar to when I paint certain areas. Start, start from, if you're right-handed, start with the left corner and work your way down so you don't have your wrist uh, applying on this. Or if you start in the center, just rotate your painting. So you're just painting it. And, uh, uh, so you're just applying this without getting it on your sleeve. Trust me, I have room tops on this. Um, now, what happens if you spill it? because this little lid, trust me, I have knocked it over. Well, you know what, you just let it dry. Let it dry, peel it off, and then you're ready to put it back on. And that does happen, all right? So I like these little lids, these little containers because they have lids on them and they'll keep for a few weeks like that in there. And it just allows me to work in small, uh, small surfaces. Uh, what would happen if I'd work out of the bottle? Um, I'd have uh, a dry film on the top. Uh, especially if I'm doing a big surface like this, that's why I do this. You know, I've even applied this in the bottom of wind of a um, my palette and just in the well of a palette because once I'm done, I just let it dry and peel it off. Comes real comes off really nicely off a uh, a palette. Okay, just any small. A uh, small container would work for this. You know, once it's done, uh, you could just peel it off if you want. You let it dry. But so this is how I go about. I just uh, keep my reference photo close. And I just um, slowly, slowly go through this. Every shape. And there are a lot of shapes to this. So this is blue. So for those who are doing th this class with me, you'll get a chance to see what it looks like uh, when it's all done. I'll send a photo of this. All right, so that's that and uh, that's it. So you can see it's starting to build up on the brush and uh, so you can just do a little bit at a time and then uh, we'll clean your brush and then start over. Just continue or continue applying on your painting. On your painting. All right. So that's about it. Um, it's always lots and lots of discussion about masking fluid. And, you know, most artists, uh, most watercolors are not a big fan of masking fluid. It adds to your process, but you know what? It does a fantastic job. Now you can apply this on, um, on, your, on the painting with paint and uh, some pigments will actually lift. If you don't have a staining pigment, uh, it will lift off the paper, so. It just doesn't lift all the paint. It just makes it lighter and you have to repaint over. So that's why sometimes it's good to paint, to do this before you actually paint on anything. Because we could have painted all the yellow flowers and then applied this over to do the background. But in this case, because we know all the shapes, um, we're not going to ad lib on anything. And it's just as easy to do this right now. And we're not gonna lose any of the colors. Because if we were to apply this on green, trust me, it would lift. And um, we would uh, have to repaint over all the lily pads. So we're just doing it this way. So I hope this has been useful. And uh, I look forward to seeing you shortly. All right. And if you have any questions, really, really do not hesitate to contact me. And I will gladly uh, answer your questions. So with that, I wish you a good day and uh, we will see you shortly. Take care. Bye-bye.